higher, this is where it starts to look a bit difficult. Okay, there's a reason why this is only in further maths in year 13. Okay, but it's actually a very useful thing to be able to know to be able to solve some vectors problems. Okay, if you can get past the difficulty stage, a bit like the scalar product, it does get much easier. As always with maths, when it's written in general form, it looks very complicated. But as soon as you put numbers in place of the letters, very, very easy. Okay? It's just a few things to remember. This is called the vector cross product. So there's the vector scalar product. This is called the vector cross product. Okay, And the notation we use is obviously a cross. That is not a multiplication symbol. Okay, So I don't know why I pointed at you. That's not a multiplication symbol. It's a cross symbol. That means A cross B. It does not mean A multiplied by B. First of all, okay. Now, can you see this is very similar to the scalar product, wouldn't it? The scalar product, or dot product, is A dot B. So we use a dot for scalar product, we use a cross for the cross product, okay? Sometimes it's just called the vector product, okay? Now, the vector product is A cross B is mod A mod B times sine theta instead of cosine theta times by this symbol here, okay? This is a bit complicated to explain. What does that actually mean? What does it actually say? Um, well, I read it as N hat, because it looks like it's got a hat on top of it, or a, an arrow or something like that, okay? Well, what does that stand for? Well, this here, okay, it stands for a unit vector, first of all. So that hat, that arrow there, indicates it's a unit vector. A unit vector is a vector of length 1, okay? It's a unit vector that is perpendicular to both A and B, okay? Unit vector perpendicular to A and B, right? For what I'm going to go through, you don't really need to know that statement, but I'm putting it in there in case you do a Google search of vector products, because that's the first thing you're going to see, probably, okay? The important thing is this bit here, the fact that it gives you a, forget that it's a unit vector, it gives you a vector that's perpendicular to A and B. And that's the whole point, really, of the vector cross product. Okay? The scalar product enables you to find the angle of intersection between two vectors. This here enables you to find a vector that's perpendicular to two other vectors. Let's just take a moment to consider that. Why is that useful? Well, let's just take mechanics, for example. All right? Now, the mechanics that we consider in our syllabus are with two dimensions. All right? And how many times does perpendicular come up? Quite a lot. Okay, you've got normal reaction forces perpendicular to the surface that an object is resting on. Okay, what if it's in three dimensions? And what if all the forces are given in vector form? How do you find a vector that is perpendicular to a given direction? Okay, how do you find a vector that's perpendicular to two other vectors? Okay, that's just an example. Okay, also with the coordinate axes system, let me just show you here. Okay, with the coordinate axes system in three dimensions, obviously. You've got x, y, z axes, okay? Or if you want the i, j, and k directions, okay? If you know that something is going on in the i, j plane or the x, y plane, okay? Sometimes it's useful to know um, what the direction of the z plane would be, okay? That's quite easy. But what if you rotate everything like that and it's not purely in the x, y plane or the x, z plane or whatever. It's useful to have a third vector that's perpendicular to it so it can operate in three dimensions. Okay. Cut a long story short, it's very useful to have a vector that's perpendicular to two given vectors. All right. right. If we just move on to this bit here, this is how we work it out. This is how we calculate it. Okay. So you know the dot product, there are two ways of doing it. You had the one involving cosine theta and then you had the other one with the multiplication of the actual values inside each uh, vector, okay? With the cross product, okay? When you're given the actual vectors, this is what we're doing. Now, I should note that what I'm saying is that if we choose vector A to be this, x1, y1, z1, and if we choose vector B to be this, x2, y2, z2. So in other words, your x, y, z, or your i, j, k values, okay, in each case, then, to find the cross product, A cross B, you do this, which might look new to you, okay? 
Well, what's going on here? Okay. Um, well, first of all, the straight line brackets. Okay. In this sense, it means determinant. Can I rub this off? Okay. It means determinant. Okay. I'm going to rub this off now because there's, there's extra moments that I'm making. Global, okay. The straight line brackets means determinant. Okay. Or debt, D-E-T for short. Determinant. Okay. What it means is you're going to have to work out the determinant of this. Now let me read it out to you. It says i, j, k at the top, and then you've got x, 1, y, 1. So in other words, your values, x, 1, y, 1, z, 1, go here. Your values, x, 2, y, 2, because when you're given the actual vectors, you give them numbers. Those numbers just go there. But you always have the i, j, k there. Why is the i, j, k there? Because this is going to give us the components in the i, j, k direction. Okay. Don't worry if you didn't understand that. It's, as long as you can do the method at this stage, that's all we're worried about. Now, how do you work out the determinant of this? Okay. You split it up into this. Okay. The determinant of that is equal to these three separate things added together. Okay. Now, how do you remember that? Okay. Now, you don't just remember that. Okay. I mean, for example, when I was writing this up, I didn't just do that off the top of my head. No, you work it out. Let me show you how you work it out. Okay, I'm going to keep that word determinant there. Okay. What you do is this. In this here, right, now, I'm going to call this a matrix. Okay. You might not have done matrices yet, okay, but I'm going to call it a matrix. Okay. In this matrix here, okay, you look at the first element, it's called an element, okay, which is I. What you then do is you put a, a line that's horizontal and vertical through all the elements in the same row and column. Okay, I'm going to call it a row, a row and a column. Okay, and what have you got left? You've got those four y1, z1, y2, z2. There, y1, z1, y2, z2. See how it works? So, what you have is you've got i multiplied by and then a smaller determinant because actually, when it comes to it, work out the determinant of a three by three matrix. Three by three matrix is actually you know, the same as doing this. Okay. So that's the first bit, okay? Now, the awkward thing is, I'm going to have to rub it out and write it off again, which is slightly time consuming, but while you're dwelling on that, let me just write it out again. Can you see how to get the next one? Mm. Right, the rule is, the next term you subtract, sorry, you have to go with it, okay? There's a proof, but you need to have done a lot of matrices work as well to see the proof, and it's now's not the time anyway, okay? And I don't want to get bogged down in proof, I'll just show you the method, okay? You subtract, and then you take the second element, which is J, and then what do you do? Through the J, you put in a line that's horizontal and vertical that gets rid of all those elements as well, okay? And what you're left with? X1, Z1, X2, Z2, there. Okay? So as I was writing this down, that was what I was doing. I wasn't actually drawing the lines, I was visualising. Once you've done these a few times, you can actually visualise it, okay? Right, while I'm rewriting that, can you just have a think about how to get the last one? And I am very confident that you've seen already how to get the last one. What did you do? You looked for a pattern, which is what mathematics is all about, isn't it? Looking for a pattern to see what's happening. I'm sure you guess what the pattern is. Okay, So it goes plus, minus, plus, so positive, negative, positive. Okay. And then what you do is, for the third element, the K, you put a horizontal line, crossing out all the elements in that row and column, and what you're left with, X1, Y1, X2, Y2, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Okay, so that's how you work it out. All right. I'm going to leave that there for the moment. So what you're left with is I times the determinant of that. Remember, each of these with the um, straight line is a determinant. I've not explain what determinant is yet, okay? I times the determinant of that, subtract J times the determinant of that, plus K times the determinant of that. And here's where I define how to work out the determinant. Where each one of these, okay, you calculate doing this. So if I just replace these with just simple A, B, C, D, okay, first four letters of the alphabet, what you do to work out the determinant of one of these is you do that times that, subtract that times that, A, D, subtract B, C. So all you've got to do is remember that times that, subtract that times that, okay, AD subtract BC. Okay. That's rather simple, okay. And that then, um, 
Oh God, sorry, popping up. That then is just a number. That gives you just a number, all right? So each one of these will be a numerical value, okay? So you get a number there, a number there, a number there, okay? So let's just suppose, you know, just for argument's sake, you've got the number two there, the number three there, you've got the number five there, okay? Let's just choose those. So that means is when you've worked out all of that, your answer would be written simply as this, 2i subtract 3j plus 5k. Or if you want to write it as a column matrix, which is what I prefer, 2, negative 3, 5. Okay? So you end up with a matrix. Ah, you end up with a vector. Okay? And that vector, going back to what I said up here, would be a vector that's perpendicular to both the original two vectors given to you. Okay. So all of that work just to find the third vector that's perpendicular to it, okay? Which, once you've done this a few times, it's actually quite quick to do and easy to do. It's quite a nice technique, okay? Um, well, I'll leave you a few moments to dwell on that. I'll go straight to the next video, which is an example, okay? Give you time to rub this off the board, okay? Maybe you have those notes with you, because I'm going to rub this off the board entirely next, okay? To help you with the example I'm about to set in the next video. Come right up.